I think I will sit. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, hello, uh, my name is Anna, and um, I will be talking today about um, parallelization techniques in GRASS GIS, and specifically how I applied them uh, for my uh, for uh, projecting uh, urban growth uh, model for uh, the entire United States. Okay, I have a lot of slides, so let's uh, get to it. Uh, just a brief introduction. Um, um, my name is Anna Petrashova. I develop uh, research uh, software uh, at North Carolina State University. And I'm also a GRASS GIS user and developer. Um, so in case you don't know, <laughs> You should know after all the talks, <laughs> but GRASS.js is an open source geoprocessing engine. Uh, it has a lot of processing tools. Um, also, uh, it has a lot of interfaces. I will be mostly showing examples uh, using Bash and Python here. Um, so when we talk about parallelization in, in GIS, I think it's useful to uh, distinguish uh, between tool level parallelization and, and workflow level parallelization. So what I mean with that is uh, when you run a tool, um, it can use, uh, for example, a certain number of cores um, and you just specify, for example, how many cores you want it to use. Uh, so that's the example there. Um, but sometimes the tools are not actually parallelized, they can use only one core, but still you can be able to speed up your GIS workflow um, by um, grouping the, uh, the uh, processing some in certain way and uh, parallelizing it on the workflow level. Um, so in this case you are calling, um, you are computing a distance to, uh, to water, roads and forest features uh, in, in parallel. Uh, so in GRASS.js, we, uh, we have basically two types of uh, parallelization going on, and it's uh, multi-threading with OpenMP, uh, and then multi-processing with Python. Um, so uh, OpenMP is, is used in GRASS for parallelization of the actual geospatial algorithms, uh, which are typically in a C or C++. And, um, I would say OpenMP is relatively easy comparing to other uh, parallelization techniques such as MPI um, <clears throat> and so on, which are often used on um, HPCs. Uh, that doesn't mean it's, uh, it's super easy comparing to Python. <laughs> um, the advantage of OpenMP is that uh, it, is, um, it is reasonable to just uh, integrate it into the existing non-parallel code, um, as the example shows. And uh, another advantage uh, is that for distribution of, you know, uh, of algorithms that you can, um, that you don't have to have separate code base uh, for parallel and non-parallel code. Also the code compiles even if you don't have the particular OpenMP library installed. Uh, these are the currently uh, OpenMP enabled tools in GRASS.js 8.2, the, re the released version. Um, the first three, um, the top three, are doing moving window analysis, um, and then there are, uh, then there is R dot series for uh, aggregation, uh, then R patch for merging data or filling nulls, uh, R sun for solar radiation, uh, V surf RST for interpolation from uh, from vector points, and uh, R sim water and R sim sediment for like hydrologic erosion um, analysis. There, are, there will be more coming soon. Um, um, for example, R.Univar for uh, now faster univariate statistics for large data. Uh, these were developed uh, uh, by Jaro Hofjerka and also by um, Aaron, who was a, a Google Summer of Code student last year. Okay, so uh, the other uh, type of parallelization uh, I mentioned was multiprocessing in Python. So typically you would use multiprocessing package, although there are other packages now. Um, and the difference here is that uh, these are, uh, the multiprocessing package uh, spawns separate operating uh, system level uh, processes, not threads. Um, <clears throat> and this is like a real simple example how, uh, how multiprocessing can be 
can be done. So it's fairly straightforward. And uh, it's used in a couple of different tools in GRASS and also the tools in add-ons. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> so this was the two-level parallelization. And now let's say you are scripting a workflow and thinking how you can speed it up. So again, uh, Python is your friend. You can uh, fairly simply uh, parallelize your workflow if you have multiple independent tasks. So this is an example where you can um, simply compute um, increasing level of uh, inundation using module r.lake. Uh, and the only thing you have to really care about is um, that your output rasters need to have a unique name. Um, similarly, in Bash, you can do it even perhaps more simply. Uh, as you probably know, you can just, on a, on a Unix system, you can just use the uh, magic ampersand to send the process into background. And you can do it for a couple of processes. Uh, if you have really a lot of, um, if you have really a lot of these calls, uh, you can, um, for example, generate them uh, or write them into a file and then just execute uh, the file using, for example, GNU Parallel or other alternatives. Um, you can also combine it together with the two-level parallelization. So here, for example, we can call um, r.neighbors as separate background processes, but each of them is actually running four threads. Uh, so then eight of your cores should be busy. So you just have to be careful then uh, so that you don't oversubscribe, although it's typically not a huge issue. Um, another approach is tiling, uh, where you, um, you can use this grid module uh, in GRASS, uh, which will conveniently wrap all the tiling computation per tile in parallel and then merging the data back. Uh, this is, of course, not suitable for some types of computations like, uh, like watershed modeling, um, but um, it works very well uh, for uh, other types. You can also specify uh, overlap so that your edges are co uh, correctly computed. Um, and there is a wrapper if you want to use the tiling for raster algebra, and that's the r.mapcalc tiled um, add-on where you, it has the completely same syntax as uh, r.mapcalc, but it runs it uh, in parallel. Okay, so now, um, so this was an overview, but I would like to uh, mention several random uh, or less random tips, tricks, and benchmarks um, I ran into uh, during uh, my computations. Okay. So um, let me uh, walk you through this. Um, so this is our neighbor's benchmark. Um, it's, a, it's around 400 million cells. So it's not like huge, huge, but it's decent uh, size. Um, and uh, on uh, the, the first plot on the left uh, is showing uh, the performance uh, uh, time that it's a, uh, the y-axis is logarithmic. And so, uh, and on X you have number of cores. So what you can see is uh, obviously the, uh, the time, um, okay, let me say first what r.neighbors does. Uh, it's, a, it's a moving window analysis, so we can compute uh, average, standard deviation, um, and so on. Um, and so if you see the, uh, with the increasing size of the moving window, uh, the time uh, jumps up really fast. Um, uh, but maybe what, uh, what may be more interesting sometimes than the absolute time is uh, how efficiently the algorithm can use the cores. Uh, because you want to know like how many cores you, you can throw at it um, and still get uh, you know, a, an efficient usage of the cores. Um, and that's what the second uh, the second plot on the right shows. Um, and I think here it's interesting that um, the parallel efficiency, so the parallel efficiency means, let's say if you run, um, if you use 10 cores, uh, maybe you would expect 10 times the speed up, but that's usually not the, 
the case. Um, so that would be parallel efficiency of, of one or 100%. Um, but usually it's low for various reasons, lower for various reasons. So uh, here you can see the parallel efficiency is really influenced by the size of the moving window. And um, you can see the for the small uh, seven times seven uh, cells window size, it, the parallel efficiency drops off really fast around those four cores. Um, <clears throat> so that means if you in this case, uh, um, tell the tell R dot neighbors to use more cores. It won't necessarily give you uh, you you won't get there faster. Um, but if you have really high uh, win, uh, large window size, um, you can actually use many more cores, and you will still get uh, speed up with each additional core. Um, so I guess the takeaway message from here is if you use this, um, uh, these OpenMP enabled uh, moving window um, tools, uh, feel free to use uh, as many cores as possible if you have really large uh, window uh, sizes. Otherwise, it really won't help you. There are even more benchmarks in manual pages of the of the tools I showed earlier. So feel free to uh, look at those. It, they can be helpful when you are trying to decide how to distribute your cores among different parallel computations. Uh, these were derived with GRAS uh, benchmark, benchmarking library. So you can even use that library if you want to experiment um, yourself. Um, overall, um, because all these modules use different algorithms, so how they scale really depends then on the particular implementation. But what I found is if you are just doing like a computation on your laptop and you just, it's not like huge data and you just want to get the result faster, usually four cores is what you will, uh, what you will help really to get most out of the parallelization. If you are doing uh, large data computations, you have, uh, you know, more, many more cores, then, um, yeah, feel free to use more as needed. Um, <clears throat> then, um, an often, I guess, often asked question is uh, in GrassJS, how do I parallelize computations if I need to uh, compute them in different, um, a different uh, geographic region. So GRASS use, uh, uses uh, this computation region for raster data computation, um, <clears throat> but it is typically limited, uh, or it is limited to uh, this single map set. So you can't have multiple, you can't use multiple uh, computation regions. Uh, you would, if you would try to do that in, in parallel, you will run into uh, issues. Uh, but there is actually a trick how to, how to get there. Uh, so in this case, uh, this is computing uh, view sheds for different points across the road. And um, so here you actually want to have different computation regions for, for each of the uh, view shed computations. Uh, so the trick here is really this, this line um, where you uh, define the region and save it into this grass region environment uh, variable. Even better, if you want to have even more fine control uh, over which, um, which tool is using which computational region, you can, uh, you can get a copy of the environment and then uh, set the environment variable over there and then pass the environment uh, into the call of the module. So then you have absolute control over what computational region um, is, uh, or which computational region is used which with which tool. Um, <clears throat> okay, then um, the tiling approach. Um, so what I was uh, having trouble with there uh, was related to large overhead. Um, so part of the tiling approach is that you typically need to merge the data back. And that part is taking uh, quite a bit of time. Um, also, there can be problem with, with uh, IO. Um, and so I haven't, I didn't get a really 
a lot of parallel efficiency out of uh, the tiling approach unless you actually use it with large data. Um, uh, also, it's better for, for processing which is uh, like long running uh, in memory computations because then you can avoid uh, the problem with the um, with IO. Um, and uh, if you are doing raster algebra, um, it makes more sense for uh, really complicated uh, raster algebra expressions. Also, um, I found out that it really matters how you tile your data. Um, so this is, you know, you would think of tiling the data, well, let's do squares or something like that. Um, but if you do actually slices, it will run faster. Um, I think the merging part is uh, currently written in a way uh, that the algorithm prefers, you know, row, row wise computations and, um, and this will impact the speed. So sometimes you don't want to, so the previous examples expected that you are running the tools from grass session. But you, you don't want to always do that. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, that's uh, what this grass minus minus exec interface can do. And these are just different examples if you want to create like a new map, new map set or new sub project. Um, you can also execute a script using this. Uh, and you can also use a temporary map set. Um, you can combine this uh, again in a, you can put all these calls in a file and then execute them in parallel. Um, okay. um, there are two, uh, two problems um, I was running into and hopefully they will be s fixed soon. So that's a warning currently, do not use a mask uh, in, in parallel with the same map set. This is uh, going to be addressed um, in A3. There are already PRs for this. Another one uh, is with R. Reclass, which is reclassifying uh, rasters. Um, <clears throat> and the problem is specifically that it's not safe for par parallel processing because it is actually um, writing backlinks to the same raster file. Uh, and so you can get actually corrupted data. So hopefully this, uh, we will address this as well. This is just a random thing I ran into. You might also run into if you work with Jupyter Notebooks. Um, this might not work uh, with the multiprocessing in Python. You have to uh, use uh, the if name equals uh, main. Um, you have to call it differently. Otherwise you, you get into some weird problems uh, with you know, Jupyter, a, no a notebook with the kernel. Okay. Um, just really quick. So about the application I was uh, using these techniques on. So we are computing uh, an urban growth model for, for the continuous United States. Uh, the model we use is futures. It's implemented in uh, GRASS GIS as a, a set of tools. So it's like a whole GIS workflow with data preprocessing. Um, and you can look at the link if you are interested in that. Um, here you can, uh, on this uh, link, you can find um, a notebook for a parallelized workflow I did for like small part, like smaller part of the US. Uh, it's still two billion cells, so it will show you how to, how you can, for example, par parallelize your workflow. A and then the, the actual case study uh, is 16 billion cells uh, and we run this on the on our institutional HPC. Um, and here are just some takeaways from that. So uh, for some cases, for, for some parts of the workflow, it really matters that you have parallelization. So this is one of them where uh, we use um, this r.futures development pressure tool which internally uses uh, r.m filter which is an open NP enabled. And uh, here you can see um, we use quite large window size and uh, if we would run it um, uh, as a serial tool, uh, it would take like five days. Uh, with, the, with the open MP parallelization, uh, it's done in uh, four and a half hours. So that's a big difference. 
On the other hand, for some of the computations, if you are not repeating them that often, it, it doesn't matter that much if you wait uh, in half an hour or 10 minutes in, you know, sometimes it matters, sometimes it not. That's kind of up to you to, to decide. Um, because US is big, uh, so what I, what I had to do is I had to, uh, so the simulation itself is not paralyzed for different reasons. Uh, so what I ended, ended up doing is splitting the computation uh, by states. And also the model itself is stochastic, which means you have to run it multiple times. So that's a lot of runs you, you need to do. Um, and so what, we, what I ended up doing is this grass, using this grass exec interface, uh, and we use a, a tool which is available on our HPC, which is, doing, which is distributing these, these individual calls using MPI to different uh, to cores on different nodes uh, in, uh, on the HPC. Uh, one problem with this uh, is that Texas is just too big. So then it just slowed down every, all, the, all, the, um, all the processes had to wait for Texas to finish. So what we ended up doing is splitting Texas in half. Okay, and this is just, you know, so that you have idea what I was actually computing there. Um, so this is uh, the urban growth model. I will briefly show you just some pictures of uh, this is the probability layer of like where the development uh, can, can uh, would happen in 2100. Okay, and uh, this is the talk. Uh, so you can you can find the talk over there, and all these uh, the, all the rest are links. You can you can then get to if you are interested in. Uh, the futures tutorial. You can try futures in Jupyter Lab uh, online, um, and and then in the Grass for 4 g uh, workshop, um, uh, some of those parallelization tricks are uh, mentioned there as well. So you can you can try that there. Okay, thank you.